But you know, the shop Smith, it makes so much sense for a small shop. I mean, it's what better thing is there? You don't have to take up a huge amount of space. You can wheel it out wherever you need it. I mean, it's brilliant. Hey, Scott from MyGrowthRings.com here, which is still not a thing, but it will be someday. And I'm excited to have with us today, Mr. Steve Ramsey. Uh, Steve is, well, if you don't know Steve, I'll just, I'll pretend you don't know him. He's a YouTuber. Uh, he is, are you an author, Steve? Uh, no. Okay, not an author, but but he does have- a, Other than a monthly newsletter that I write. <laughs> there you go. He does have a, 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 some online courses that we'll talk about in here as well. You're a freaking podcaster, dude. How many podcasts are you involved in? I do two podcasts. I, I love podcasting. Absolutely love it. Okay. So I, I, I subscribed to uh, the one with you and Chad and then yeah. one that I think changed names. Just changed the name to Creative Culture a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, kind of expanded it to what, what it's all about. And that one, I mean, it's just so much fun. This is like the, it, it takes me back to the early days of YouTube. This is kind of how I felt uh, that level of excitement of doing something new. And so it's just a show where I get to talk to creative people, you know, that's a very broad open-ended subject so it allows me to talk to woodworkers makers artists musicians diyers all these kind of things and it, i just love it fantastic all right hey i'm not done introducing you yet quit, interrupt, <laughs> quit interrupting me steve <laughs> that's so like my podcast you so you can talk. <laughs> <laughs> what i'm most impressed with about steve is he has made woodworking accessible He's taken away so much of the mystery and, and really ultimately, if we want to admit it, it's intimidating, the intimidation out of approaching woodworking. And it's a pleasure to have Steve here and to reveal his shopsmith connection, if you don't know. So Steve, yeah. uh, welcome. I well, uh, appreciate you being here. Thank you. I'm glad, I'm glad you invited me. <laughs> Is there anything else you want to say or should we just wrap this up? <laughs> <laughs> But you know, it's it's funny that you, because I think I first met you, it might have been, I was doing a live stream or something and you had, you made a, you left a comment, I think. And it's yeah. funny how, you know, leaving a comment can actually has power. I always tell people, you know, when you watch yeah. a video, just leave a comment. You never know what, where that might lead or anything, but, uh, and you mentioned that you had a shopsmith because that's how I got started in woodworking many years ago. So so tell us about that. Where were you? Because now you're in San Francisco, correct? Right. Yeah. I'm where, outside of San Francisco now. I'm up in Marin County. Okay. So where were you and how did that come about? So I grew up outside of Denver in a suburb called Lakewood. And we had uh, my dad and my grandfather were both kind of influences on me as far as starting in woodworking. But they just had kind of a handheld tools for the most part. And they were really good at fixing things and building more kind of construction projects. You know, I would kind of help my dad build like a, a big roof over the patio or something like this. These are kind of large scale things. But one day, and I don't know what it is. I should ask my dad about this one day. He, he got it in his mind that he wanted to do woodworking. And so he just all of a sudden, I honestly, I don't even know the process of this. I was probably... 10 at the time 10 or 11 all of a sudden this shopsmith shows up <laughs> at her house you know and and my dad was like so excited about this thing i'm like what is this what is this all about and he's like oh man you can do all this stuff with it and so he started making things on the shopsmith and i was just like captivated by it i thought this was the coolest thing and the first thing that really garnered my attention was the lathe on it. The lathe is really kind of my entry point into woodworking because it just was, it felt so artistic. And, you know, he showed me, he had an old lathe, which I still have now he gave to me from like the 1940s or 50s. But this one was much nicer on the shopsmith and he showed me how to set it up and how to how to turn things on the lathe. So I was I was really busy making lamps and, and candle holders and, and things like that on there. And then he would show me other things to do on the shopsmith and how to, uh, the shopsmith is still a pretty amazing tool. I, I loved the, the miter gauge on it. I remember it was really cool yeah. because it had this trigger that would just hold the, the wood in place as you ran it through. I don't know why that isn't on more I know. 
miter gauges anymore because that was just a really really clever thing so that miter gauge was knocked off somebody in china well they, they they knocked off the whole machine at one point but they knocked off the miter gauge and then that was i think that had the best penetration in woodworking for a while but they they knocked it off so poorly the casting for the trunnion was like super thin and weak they didn't put the glides on the bottom that are integrated into the shopsmith miter gauge so the thing would teeter-totter. Oh, yeah. And so I think people just assumed that kind of miter gauge must be really bad. It's sort of like when people see particle board or, or right. veneer or plywood being used, they assume, oh, this is bad woodworking. Or maybe, yeah. po maybe pocket screws. Right. Exactly, <laughs> because they're not using them the right, the right way. You know, there's a right and wrong yeah. ways to use things. And Absolutely. The other thing I really, the other thing I really liked about the Shopsmith was it had a horizontal drill press, mm. and I thought that was really interesting because it, well, it was just a drill press, but you could do it sideways. And so I right. remember my dad bought this really long drill bit that I could bore out these lamps that I made, so I could run, ah. uh, run a cord through them. It was really cool. That's cool. So you made lamps. What else did you make? I made lamps, candle holders. I remember there was like one Christmas where like everybody was getting candle holders, you know, they were like really kind of like, oh no, not another candle holder from Steve. But <laughs> and I'm, I'm sure they didn't look like much. I was, you know, 11 years old or whatever at the time. But um, I think those were the, the main things I remember making. I remember making like a, we had a fireplace that that I made uh, like a match holder for that I thought was really cool at the time I had. I remember drilling holes into the side of this block of wood and, at an angle that you could put long like wooden matches in. And then on top of this thing, I bored out like a little recessed area and then I glued a stone on top of it. Oh. You know, I, I went out trying to find a nice rock that I can put on there. So you had like a striking of area course. for it. And so it had all these matches sticking out of it, like a porcupine with a stone on top that you could strike them on. And that, that, that was sitting so, right by the fireplace. Right by the <laughs> fireplace, of course. <laughs> Wooden match encrusted porcupine. All right. Okay. Oh, man. <laughs> I do remember that very well. And it's funny because I ran across a lamp that I made. My dad showed it to me. I guess he found it somewhere a couple of years ago. And it was it was just crazy to see that after so many years. It's kind of a it's a strange thing to see a project that you made like 40 years ago or something, yes. you know. Yeah, I mean, it's just so weird because it's like I remember doing that, but I and if, at the same time, it just looks different to me than I remember it you know it's like oh wow this thing is way out of proportion I did well, a horrible yeah, job putting this base on it and it just it looks awful and at the time you know I thought oh this is so cool I, I gave a clock to some friends for their uh, as a wedding gift and it's got to be at least 40 years ago and they showed it to me recently and I was so embarrassed <laughs> just I, what I had to do is make them a new one. It was so bad. And isn't that funny if you look at your old projects like that? But you know, I guess that's good. I think if we didn't look at our old projects in that light, we would have made no progress. If we well, still look at things we did ten years ago and go, "Yep, yeah, that was the best I ever did." And what's <laughs> funny with I, I don't I I don't know that I've ever said this on this channel, but as much as I loathe river tables, mm -hmm. this clock was covered in in Virotex. You remember that product? No, like, I don't know that. Like the first DIY epoxy, it was clear. Oh, okay. Two models together, and it, the whole thing was completely smothered in epoxy. <laughs> what was I thinking? <laughs> uh, wait, wait a second. You mean there's people that don't like river tables? <laughs> I've heard that there are some people who don't like river tables. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's get into some more controversy. <laughs> uh, yeah. Did did. Uh, did your dad have any of the other accessories besides the the basic Mark V? Um, I'm trying to remember what else. I know he had the, there was a, a sanding disc. I remember using that a lot. And it was a big sanding disc. I remember it was like, it had to be over 10 inches diameter. 12, 12, 12 inch. Yeah, it was huge. And I can't remember if he had a belt sander. Does it come with a belt sander? Can you get a belt sander attachment? You can or, get one. Tip, typically, and if you're talking, you were 10 years old. I don't think he had a belt sander on it. I think it was just the disc sander. When were you born? 66? 66, yeah. 66. So 76, here's why your dad bought it. Shopsmith Incorporated was started in the, in the mid-70s, and the company had been out of business for a number of years. And hmm. suddenly they're, they've reintroduced this machine. They're marketing it, doing trade show events and, you know, home center shows. Hmm. 
Not home shows. Must, in, in malls, they were doing home shows. You know, he probably saw it at a mall. I'll bet you I anything. Bet. That's been That's back exactly when malls right. were back when malls were a thing. <laughs> yeah, and and to get folks to to buy, oftentimes they would say that the show only. We're going to oh. throw in, you know, your choice of a joiner, a bandsaw, a belt sander. Oh, right. A jigsaw oh, back in those days. So yeah. It wouldn't surprise me if he had. That's had really it. interesting. You know, I'll bet you that's exactly what happened. Because I just remember that thing showing up. It was yeah. so funny. And he was just so, he loved it so much. Does it he was still so, have it? No, he, 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 he can't he do, do it. Any he, woodworking? No, he actually sold that. And he actually got, a, I mean, this is how many years has he had this thing? And about five years ago, he finally sold it because he just wasn't able to really get down to the basement anymore. But he sold it for a pretty good price. I mean, considering how old it was, it, it they, the resale value on those things must be really good. Depends upon where you are. Oh, really? It, it, in, and I know in Denver, a uh, couple, couple guys I know there comment about how, how expensive they are. And other folks on the East Coast or around around the Dayton area, you know, because they produce mm -hmm. them there, uh, find them a little easier to get. Yeah. You go, if you go to Florida, you can get all kinds of woodworking tools cheap because that's like the Dead Sea. People move down there. They bring their stuff <laughs> with them. Things oh, happen. No. And then those tools become available. <laughs> so. Things happen, air quotes. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, that's true. But, you know, the shop smith, it makes so much sense for a small shop. I mean, it's what better thing is there? You don't have to take up a huge amount of space. You can wheel it out wherever you need it. I mean, it's brilliant, really. I, I'm surprised that there isn't more of this kind of like multi-use power tools around today. Yeah, I agree. And I think that part of its reputation has been tainted. And so woodworkers kind of feel like, oh, I don't want to use those tools because they're, oh, they're so hard to change over. I hear that mm -hmm. from people who've never touched one. Oh, and right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're, you're right. If you don't plan your work and you suddenly in the middle of sawing realize you didn't drill two holes, yeah, you're going to have to spend a few minutes setting the machine up for drilling again. Yeah. But it, it really does force folks to kind of think ahead, which is how bad is that? Yeah. Well, and it's, it's for the hobbyist really. I mean, it, and so what's your hurry? Take the time, <laughs> set the thing up. It ain't going to kill you. Yeah. Well, my, my grandfather, speaking of Denver, my, my family's from Denver and my grandfather had a, a woodworking business uh, off of Broadway somewhere mm -hmm. near downtown. And uh, in addition to having a lathe that could, could turn a 20 foot tall porch uh, column. Wow. And all the Delta massive tools you could want in the corner was an old shopsmith mm -hmm. because if he needed to drill a hole or do something and every other tool was hopefully being utilized, he had a, basically a duplicate of every tool sitting over in the corner with the, oh, with right. the shopsmith. So again, for that reason alone, I'm surprised that, that folks don't have them. Yeah. But that's okay. Uh, if they figure this out, they'll be more expensive on the, uh, the used market. So well, plus, I think these days people are so into buying tools. It's like almost become its own thing. It's just uh, like always, always buying, always consuming. I, I heard you, I think maybe it was even you and Chad talking about the evolution of the YouTube channels, the woodworking channels. Yeah. And how it seems after a time they fall into different categories. And one of those is. The you know, tools. Tool, tool review so you click on the link right <laughs> yeah there is no such thing as an honest tool review i think i mean there, there's some you know if a guy occasionally just likes a tool and does it but if you see a thing that says tool review it's th that tool company is involved in that in some way <laughs> you know there people youtubers aren't just posting videos promoting tool companies without reason but well, it just okay. seemed to be a here huge. I, here I am, right? But I don't. I don't do a, get any money. For, I don't think Shopsmith has money to give people. <laughs> right. Yeah. But it it does definitely see you see that route that a lot of people have taken these days is that the because there's there's a lot of money in that and all you all you're doing is hey there's a tool alert there's something on sale and here's my affiliate link and yeah <laughs> yeah it's a it's a big big industry now and it, it's. Tool companies were kind of late to the late to the game, really. I mean, yeah. 10 years ago, they wouldn't touch anything on YouTube or it, they were like, wait, well, we're just going to advertise in magazines. We're fine. Yeah. 
that, that's true. <laughs> and, and who's buying the magazines now? Yeah. So, yeah. you know, in the, to that end, I was super excited when you started teaching or offering courses online, because I think that's also a very good fit for what my subscribers and viewers are into because being able to at any time day or night get an authoritative answer yeah you can go on youtube and search anything but is the answer you're getting really the truth or is it underwritten by you know ryobi yeah do you recall and i guess we could just admit that multi-purpose tools come with some compromises do you recall any point of working with your dad, Shopsmith, that you got frustrated? Uh, was there anything in particular that? Uh, no, you felt? because I, you know, I honestly I didn't know any different. I <laughs> I just thought this was I didn't know that you could have a standalone table saw or any of this stuff. I might have known it and maybe I'd I'd seen it, but to me this was just the way we worked, and it didn't. I I never got frustrated having to like switch back and forth between tools. And granted, I guess most of the projects I made, I remember making like some little boxes for like a little pet box for our cats. And and I, I think I made a couple of bird houses with my grandfather. And these were all pretty small projects that didn't yeah. require a whole lot of switching back and forth from tools. So I, I could pretty much start on that table saw, cut boards down. I probably cut every board all at once, <laughs> you know, and then just yeah. slapped it together. I sanded it using that disc sander and maybe, uh, you know, glued and screwed it together. Probably used nails. I remember back then it was, my grandfather was really into it. Like you just nail things together. You would yeah. nail, it was like years later when I realized, oh wait, it, we don't really use nails a whole lot in woodworking. <laughs> no, uh, I bought a hammer the other day and my wife says, how many hammers do you have? This will be the first I've had in a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a yeah. big difference between woodworking and, and construction projects, yes. you know. Yeah. I have I have some nail guns, though, and some brad nailers and some headless pinners, too. Yeah, I like uh, my brad nailer. I use that from time to time. That gets real handy. You, you launched the Weekend Woodworker several years ago. I, yeah. I remember watching you um, on uh, Tim Schmoyer's channel mm -hmm. as you were going through his his workshop. And was it around the same time or or after that you launched that? Yeah, I, I launched my course in 2017. And so that was that was like a huge change for you know my business. And uh, it just turned out great. I mean, it was really the I think it just and it still to today serves a purpose that's just underfilled is just yeah. the, and so I've I've been really gearing everything on my entire channel and everything I do towards the beginning woodworker. I think it's just a really underserved market that somebody needs to fill. You know, I think there needs to be a voice for somebody to tell anybody how you can get started and don't gloss over things. That was really huge for me on the courses is to not assume that people know how to hold a drill. Yes. Because if if you've never done any woodworking in your life, which is most people, just holding a drill or or putting a yeah. drill bit into a chuck is something alien to you. It's a weird thing to do. So I, I think that it's and for me, it it teaches me a lot on how to kind of think like a new woodworker and to know that everything I'm doing is is in service of just trying to help these people out and help them to learn woodworking. And then hopefully at some point, They'll just graduate from me and go on to build uh, beautiful, beautiful furniture and stuff. Look, uh, even even with what I know, and I've been doing this for a while, you put out, I don't know, maybe it's, too, I, I shouldn't put dates on this, but you put out a video on basically everything you need to know about pocket holes. And I oh, yeah. almost didn't click on it, but I thought, you know what? I'm going to see <laughs> what Steve has to say. It was wonderful absolutely wonderful and even knowing most of the things you were sharing you did such a great job oh it? thank you thank uh, you i have uh craig actually shares that video a lot they recommend it which is kind of nice to to know yeah. well i'm a corporate trainer in my real life and so i appreciate it when people you know think about what they're going to share before they share it and then deliver it in a way that's easily digestible which is what you did so so now you have three different uh courses is that right Right. Yeah. We've got the 
the weekend woodworker, which is an entry level course, teaches you everything, get you started woodworking by building projects. So you're, you know, you can start with zero experience and very little space and, and not a lot of tools. And then you could be up and running. And then the course just kind of takes you through step by step, you know, building a, projects using very limited tools to eventually be showing you how to use a table saw and then building up to like a final project. And then the second course kind of expands on that a little bit to make more uh, higher end projects. And then in the third course, which is very popular, is the weekend workshop, which is all about setting up a workshop in a particularly in a small space, whether it's a garage or a basement or even a garage that you have to share with a car, because that's a big problem people have is that. <laughs> You know, yeah. one person in that relationship may not want to cede their spot <laughs> in the in the garage. So you you've got to be able to work around that. And so in that course, I'm able to show how you can make everything, all of the the stands for your tools and all of the storage and wood storage and all of this stuff and keep it mobile and out of the way. Yeah. No, that's that's fantastic. That's I have a friend who's also a, a, a YouTuber using Shopsmith tools, and he shared a little bit of a shop tour in his shop as a two car garage. And he did one video basically showing what he has to do to get set up. And it's like, I don't know, maybe a 15 minute ordeal to get everything back, cars backed out and everything. Dedication. He has Tetris, you know, at the very yeah. front of the garage. Yeah. And, uh, you know, forget setup of the shopsmith imagine any tool or family of tools that you have to work out of a storage space like that okay <laughs> now you you've also got some shops shop made tools which i'm a big fan of you know self-sufficiency and building things such as a router table mm -hmm. is that covered in one of your courses the router table yeah, we have that in the weekend workshop course, I believe, as uh, the router table. I've got a real simple version, and I've got a bigger version that I made for myself years ago. I think a router table is kind of, if you're going to have a router, you pretty much need a router table. I, I probably use the router table, you know, 80% of the time when I'm using a router. It's yeah. more so that I hardly ever use the router just handheld. What what is the most used piece of of shop equipment or shop furniture that you have built? Uh, workbench. workbench. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, easily. I, I've made so many workbenches over the years, and I've kind of gotten that whole process down really well. And it's the type of workbench that is just a rough and tumble, you know, workbench. And what I like about my workbench is I, I make them with a hardboard masonite top so that I can, when it gets damaged and paint and junk all over it, I can just remove it and replace it. Yeah. Norm Abram style. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I did have somebody was uh, kind of teasing me because I, I built something for my shop recently uh, on, on video and I use pocket screws. I don't think for the first time, but I think maybe the first time on a, on a, completed project to build a drawer and they first off they accused me of being you and they did it <laughs> they did it in an accusatory way uh -huh. and, and i said look if you don't like that you need to get get over that because as soon as i start building some some shop storage you're gonna mm -hmm. see a lot of pocket screws because they make sense look, yeah a dovetail makes sense for yeah dirty i don't think so yeah, I just don't like this idea of gatekeeping in, in woodworking, that there's only certain ways to do woodworking. I mean, you could really make things in any number of ways. It's kind of like why we're seeing such an explosion in woodworking over the past 10 years is because it's become more and more accessible for people to do. And there's there's not as many people trying to tell you, well, you, you must cut a dovetail joint to fit things together when there are other options that you can use that are perfectly strong and and right. acceptable. And I think a lot of people have this in mind that if you're making a woodworking project, it must be an heirloom piece. You know, it's something that has to be sturdy enough to survive a, a grenade <laughs> or something. And it has to be able to last for a hundred years. And that's not always the case. You know, yeah. I just got through building an outdoor bench and I just made it out of two by fours. It looks great. And if I get a few years out of it, fine you know I, I don't expect it to last forever it's not the intention were they exterior exterior grade two by fours or interior interior 
Yeah. Well, it's, you just use it those. Well and it'll yeah. Fun. It's the second one I've made of these. I mean, and really if you paint projects, it's, you're good to go. I mean, it's going to last a lot longer. It's really kind of the best way to protect an outdoor project is with paint. This particular one I stained with an outdoor, it's like a deck stain and uh, it seems to look pretty good. And, but even those, you know, you use any kind of outdoor finish, it's going to, it's still going to, that wood is just, it, elements are harsh. Sun, yeah. especially the sun, the sun just damages wood so, so badly. I remember helping my dad build some, uh, a, first off a fence and then some patio furniture. And I questioned the joinery because it was, it seemed so sloppy. And mm -hmm. he, he said to me something along the lines of, if you're, if you're building it for outdoors, you have two choices. One is make it watertight or you got to, you know, give it room to breathe. Yeah. And so that's what he was doing. And, and this furniture lasted forever. So yeah, yeah. That's right. I I think with outdoor projects, people need to to accept the fact that it will gray yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no matter what kind of wood you use. And, you know, it's kind of true with even any kind of wood, even on interior projects. Yeah. People love yeah. to get like Purple Heart or something. And I was you know, just thinking Purple Heart. I, and it's beautiful when yeah. it darkens. It's this real chocolate brown color, but it's it doesn't stay purple forever. Yeah. <laughs> not, not very long, really a few years, you know, and all That's wood true. does that. It, has there ever been a comment from a troll or from the safety police that after you got over the, gosh darn it, I can't believe they said that, you you said to yourself, they're probably right? <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, especially earlier on in my YouTube career, I was a little more, you know, fast and free with safety, I guess. And then I kind of learned over time that that's kind of the one of the main thing that people like to watch out for and then i got to the point where i realized that it's my role to show good safety techniques and so i'm really aware of that and i i make sure that you know when i'm editing my videos that they're i'm not showing anything unsafe and because yeah if i am i definitely there was a time is it and this stuff happens even recently i had was using a stack of dado blades on my table saw and then switched it back. And I forgot to reinstall my riving knife, which is the one thing I, I preach all the time. Yes. Always have a riving knife on your table saw. And for this one cut, I just forgot to install the thing. And for some reason, I didn't notice it on the video when I was editing. I just didn't even, didn't even occur to me. And of course, I, where's your arriving knife? Where's your arriving knife? The comments, I'm like, yeah, you got me. I screwed up on this time. And that happens, you know? I think this is why accidents happen because they're accidents. We don't yes. plan on it. And no matter how much you think and try and try to do everything correctly, it's possible that you can just do something dumb. Every time I hear somebody getting injured, they always say the same thing. It was just a dumb thing I did. Right, right. Have you been injured in the shop? Yeah, that's uh, the only thing I've ever been injured on is a chisel was probably the worst injury I had was a hand chisel and I had my hand in front as I was trying to carve something it was just really dumb and I sliced my finger open didn't require stitches but that hurt and probably the most common injury I get is on my disc sander actually because my knuckles get too close as I'm trying to sand something and I just oh. abrade my knuckles on there. <laughs> Have you had an abrasive cleaning stick? suck you into uh, a sander no, yet oh, no. oh that happened to me one time <laughs> not a, not pleasant yeah I'm, so, I'm i'm lucky i haven't had any you know but i i take everything real seriously and i take things pretty slowly and maybe it helps me that i'm shooting video because i can't work really fast when i'm doing that and so i have to really think about everything i'm doing well i'm, I'm glad to hear that about the injury i'm i'm i also the worst injury i have ever had and i got some scar uh, from the tool was uh, my hand slipped when I was changing a blade and the arbor wrench I was using oh, yeah. was kind of wonky and short. And it put my fingers right near the blade. And it, it just, Ouch. you know, a quarter inch of, yeah. of dropping of my hand. And I, boy, they were sharp. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God, that's <laughs> awful. I've, I've hit my knuckles before on those arbor nuts, just saying it, when they're trying to break them yeah. free. And it, phew, Goes, yeah, they, yeah, the wrenches all all used to have a bend in them. And right, I guess the yeah. theory was to keep your hand away, but it, it would slip off really easily. <laughs>
Uh, it's another thing I learned is you don't need to tighten those arbor nuts that tight. You know, it's sort of self tightening in a way. The way the That's direction exactly of the, right. yeah, exactly right. Yeah, I think everybody, uh, including router bits and router collets, they, mm -hmm. you white knuckle it because you don't want that bit coming out. Have you ever had a router bit either break or come loose? Yeah. Because when they do, they don't fly across the room. They just the motor gets real loud and high pitch all of a sudden, yeah. and the bit's just sitting there. Yeah, yeah. You know, maybe maybe it could be worse. You know, I, I have a friend who uh, wanted me to prompt you with the question. He said, so as you're planning ahead for retirement, what's mm -hmm. your best advice on where to put your money? And I said, <laughs> I'm talking to Steve Ramsey. <laughs> yeah, you, you got the wrong one. But I, I can give you cooking advice, though. Oh, wait, that's the wrong Ramsey, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But so I do what, have advice for retirement. Don't. Yeah, well, exactly. <laughs> I, you know, don't don't call it that. Sure, you may quit your regular job, but find something else to do. I have no intention of really retiring. I just want to keep working, doing what I do, love. Very good. Well, Steve, um, I appreciate your time today. It's been a pleasure chatting with you. You bet. Sure, anytime. Sure, my viewers will say the same. Um, what What are the best places to find you? I know of several. But probably more. <laughs> I would just say Google or, yeah, okay. or you know YouTube. But it's probably. Steve, not right, not you... Steve in right. Yeah, because I, I, I misspelled my name on my original channel. <laughs> oh, did you really? <laughs> yeah, Steve in Marin. What it used to be oh, called? Oh, that's that. right. Yes, yeah. I remember that. Yeah, but I, I misspelled my name when I set up my YouTube account. So for a long time, I, I it was just Stev in Marin. I forgot the second e. <laughs> well, luckily those days are over now <laughs> so just yeah just steve uh, ramsey don't 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 be looking for gordon or, or dave very good and uh and you're on instagram and mm -hmm. you're uh do you have a facebook account or, or i do yeah channel or woodworking for mere mortals we're on facebook mortals. sure okay very good well we will see you there thanks great. again steve you're welcome all right the rest of you make it a great day